Hey guys, hope you're doing good. Uh, today, actually, I'm repeating one session, which is lesson two and three using Visual Studio Code. So in the first lesson, we installed Visual Studio Code. And for all the other lessons, we have used Visual Studio Code. But for this one, Visual Studio was used. So today, I'm going to repeat this session so that uh, use of the same tool will be consistent throughout the lessons. Now, let's start a tutorial. So today we're going to learn about variables, strings and numbers. Let's open our Visual Studio Code so that we can learn and practice at the same time. So what is a variable? So variables are used to store values. The values can be of any type, but today we're going to discuss about strings and numbers. So what is a string? A string is a series of characters surrounded by a single or double quotes. For example, I love to walk, I learn Python. Now let's work with string in Visual Studio Code. Write these st statements and run over there. Let's see how it goes. First, we're going to write the print statement straight away and then we're going to make use of a variable. Start Visual Studio Code, new file, languages Python. Now print I am learning Python. Now let's save this file. Execute the command. It says I'm learning Python. Now let's make use of a variable here. Variable says we all are learning Python. And then we're going to print the variable. Let's see how it goes. So I am learning Python, which is here, a simple print statement. And then we are making use of a variable, which we are printing down, which is we all are learning Python. So this is a variable, variable which stores a value. And then we, you can use that value to print out and or to use any other operations. Now. These are functions on strings. There are many functions on strings, but we're going to restrict this session uh, with three functions only, which is capitalize, is lower, and is upper. Let's find out what exactly the functions are. A function is a block of code which only runs when it is caught. You can pass data, known as parameters, into function. A function can return data as a result. Now, there are many functions, as I said, for strings, but let's discuss only three functions today. Capitalize is lower and is upper. Capitalize function. Capitalize converts the first character to uppercase. So if we run this code in Visual Studio Code, see what will happen. Text says, hello and welcome to my world. X is txt dot capitalize. This is a function and print text. So you're going to clear this section and see what happens. If it works, capitalize, then the H will be in capital letter. So hello and welcome to my world. So this is capitalize function. What it is doing, it is just changing the first character to uppercase. Moving further, is lower function. Now is lower actually checks if everything is lowercase or not. If it is lowercase, then it's gonna print X, which is X is txt dot is lower function the value of is this true or false so it returns true if it is lo is lower if all the characters are in lowercase otherwise it returns false let's see how it works clear this section txt is hello world is lower or not let's see true now if i change this to capital h false so it is just checking whether the, your string is in lowercase or not moving further replace this is interesting this actually replaces one part of a string to another now this is our text which is i like america now we are replacing with america with belgium and let's see what the result will be now let's clear this out run 
I like Belgium. But what was before it? Let's print the TXT before. So let's clear this out. Before is I like America and after should be I like Belgium. <coughs> so this is the way the replace function works. So you replace a part of a whole string with this word and this is the result you get. Let's move on to concatenation. This is very important thing with strings because concatenation is quite needed in, in future when you, when you start programming because if you want to uh, make one of the variable in one of the part of the string and that variable changes every time so you have to concatenate with a static part. So with concat for concatenation you need plus symbol. So this is plus for concatenation. Let's read it. One operation which is very common with string is concatenation, which is combining strings. A plus is used to combine two or more strings. Now, first name, Python. Let's, let's try this code, this piece of code in our Visual Studio code. So first name is Python, second last name is expert, and now we are plus here, which is concatenation. Why we have done is to make it clarity. If we remove this portion, then it's going to have the same name without a cap, which is not very tidy. So if I run this one, it says Python expert. Now if I come here, use the space in between, so it will say Python expert. So this is the way you concatenate string using a plus symbol. Going further to numbers. So now what variables we have run is, let's do summarize. A variable is basically is storing a value which you can use that value in your program. You can print it out or you can use that for further calculations. So now we, we talk about string also and we, we just printed out the string and we made use of a variable which stores a value for string and that we print it out. So we, we just talked about functions on strings also which are capitalized is lower is upper. Capitalize is capitalizing the first character, is lower, is checking whether the whole string is in lowercase or not. Replace is replacing a part of a string with other string, whatever we like. And so these are the string ones. Concatenation, as I said, one of the important thing, which is making use of plus to concatenate string. Now let's move to numbers. <coughs> Now, number of are of two types, integers and of which are of type int and fractional part which is decimal part are called float. So int and float. Now let's play with numbers and use Python interpreter as a calculator. I am sure you guys already know that Python interpreter can be also used as a calculator but I'll show you in a while. The interpreter acts as a simple calculator. You can type an expression at it and it will write the value. The below given operators can be used for practice, which is addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Let's try these ones out. Now, I've just written down over here, you can open your Python interactive shell and start. How you can open it, let's find out. This is our Python. Let's first of all clear this out. You can keep it because we are not executing this one. Moment you write Python here, it will open an interactive shell. Now here, whatever operation you will write, you will get the results. So now you, you can also use these operations and see whether you are getting the value or not. This is a kind of an exercise for you guys. Just go through it and see it, if it gives the correct values or not. So numbers and variables. So in before we have talked about strings with variables and now let's talk about numbers and variables. So the variable can store a value and then you can use that particular variable to, for the calculation. Now, if I come here, if I print the statement, I exit this place first, clear this out. <coughs> now, if I do print this statement, it will give me 100. What it exactly it is doing? It is storing the length as 20, breadth as 5, and then uh, printing the value or the calculation straight away, length into breadth. Now, if there is a 
variable of a different name, then definitely it will give me a warning which is a say which says length is not defined. If I run it, it will give me an error because basically it is not defined and we are using it. So which is wrong. So if we are going to use the same name over here, it will work and it will give the value. So here variable is basically storing a value. So here these are the variables, these are the values and we are making use of these variables in the print state. Now, as I discussed, the, there are two types of numbers. One is integer, one is float. How, what if you want to find out what type of variable you have? So what you're going to do is just use this variable underscore one is equals to length. Just remove this length underscore one, which is length times now, this if we print out the where one, so it will give me the correct value, which is 100. Now, if I want to know what type of this variable is, then what will happen? It will give me int, which is integer. So this is a type of integer. Now, if I duplicate this code, and I use variable as two here, uh, length is underscore one, breadth is underscore one, length underscore one, breadth underscore one. And if I do 5.5 .5 here, so it will give me float and the type this time will be float. So, oh uh, no. Or because uh, we are just printing the type of var1 which was wrong so we just remove var1 to var2 because this section the above section is of var1 the below section is for var2 so length breadth length and breadth var1 printing var1 type of var1 length underscore 1 breadth underscore 1 var2 printing the var2 and printing the type of it now let's clear this and see how it works we run we got integer and we got float so this is the way it works you can write down uh, the type of the variable or you can put any of the calculation over here so it will give you float integer or those kind of things I hope you enjoyed this lesson so this was basically to uh, learn variable strings and number using Visual Studio Code Editor. We have been using Visual Studio Code Editor for all our lessons. So that's why I repeated this session today. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new today. Uh, please uh, subscribe and like our channel. Thank you.